easy answer is if we're talking major change is quarterback because yeah. that's the only major position that that change could be made. But right. look, here's the way I've always seen it with the entire Jimmy Garoppolo situation. Yeah. I think that they will move off of Jimmy if they can get a better option at quarterback yeah. than Jimmy. Look, yeah. getting a better – see, Jimmy's in a kind of awkward situation because it's tough to get a better quarterback than him definitively. Yeah. But it's also like he's not exactly what they want at quarterback no. in terms of he's definitely that guy. It's the same situation Kirk Cousins has been in for years. I yes. think Dak Prescott, even though I think he's a little better, I yeah. think he's kind of in that situation where they're like, well, we don't want to play you Mahomes money because you're the yeah. tier under. We're right. really good. We won't find a quarterback better than you, but we don't want to pay you like the top guy. Which is smart because right. there's a lot of historical precedent. I mean, look at the Rams. Right, right. So I'm look at the Eagles. Golf, golf. I think Goff is another guy that fits in that tier. Though I like Jimmy and Dak, just who they are a lot. Yes. I feel like they're more assured of themselves than Goff. But yeah. that's that's just me. So when I say major change, look, I'm not going to say quarterback because right. getting a quarterback better than Jimmy is going to be not easy next year. Yeah, like the quarterbacks better than Jimmy are not. Like you don't, if you're letting them go from your team, then you're, you're, you have a real problem in your organization because you, 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 they're, they're way too good to just let them walk away. Right. It's not like you're going to go get Mitch Trubisky and be like, oh, that's an upgrade. Or right, it, right, right. Matt Stafford right. isn't going to land in your laps. You're not going right. to get Carson Wentz. No. If they could get Carson Wentz next offseason, they probably would do it. I mean, right. if they were considering 44 year old Tom Brady, then sure, if Carson Wentz was on the trade block, they might make that work, but it's not going to happen. Right, and happen. Aaron Rodgers, like that ship has that's gone. Still, like the guy's yeah. playing unbelievable football. Maybe he himself says, "Look, I'm done with you guys. I want to go to San Francisco." But that's he's not team, trending that direction. Right, that situation right. looks far fetched. He looks, he looks happy too, like happy. So happy, happy. Yeah. Right, and yeah. so the, the then if we're saying predict a major change that Kyle will make next year, I think the major change is that they won't resign Richard Sherman. Yeah, they won't reach on Richard Sherman. That's true. Yeah. Um, and would they make any structural changes to their offense? I mean, this, it seems like this is what the offense is going to look like no. with Jimmy Garoppolo the quarterback. This is it. No, I don't, I don't think they can make structural changes. To be honest, I think that people are expecting the second-year jump with Jimmy, the Matt Ryan, Matt Schaub jump this year. Look, if he's the quarterback next year, that's the year I'm expecting the jump because that's the year – that you're going to get a second-year Brandon Ayuk, a third-year mm -hmm. Debo Samuel, hopefully a healthy Jalen Hurd to go yeah. with George Kittle. Like this offense, Matt Ryan made the jump with an offense with great continuity that added Alex Mack most. In Thank it. you. It, it wasn't, wasn't just like he like was sitting around in the offseason and was like, oh, right. my God. It, just, it, I, 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 it all makes sense now. No, they added a bunch of players. Right. Well, they added two players, and they had an existing core. Same they added thing Sanu. With, they added Taylor Gabriel. They, they, added they had what's his? They had Andre Johnson already, and who was one of the best receivers in football. Look, sure. they need time. They need time to play together. And it's mm -hmm. it's pretty simple to me that if he's the quarterback next year, that's the year you expect the jump because that's Brandon Ayuk's second year. That's Debo Samuel's third year. Yep. And that's hopefully Jalen Hurd's back. And look, there's going to be weapons galore in this offense. And that's when he turns 30. So if it doesn't happen by then, you're starting to wonder, can we draft a guy? Can we get more upside? I mean, they passed on Jordan Love this year, which is understandable. Passed but maybe in a couple of years, if Jimmy Garoppolo hasn't taken a leap, they wouldn't pass on, on, on a quarterback who's athletic in that situation. But that's two years down the line. It's impossible right. to predict right. that far. Look, they that's like their QB room a lot, too. Yeah, so I think they're hard pressed taking an extra quarterback that they you're want. An athlete like CJ Beathard in your QB room, you're not. I mean, you're not. Hard, you're not desperate. Hey, hey, I'm not. I'm. I'm not here for any CJ slander today. Me neither. I this do, is the one day I'm all over CJ. He's this my is guy. CJ. Yeah, the national CJ Beathard day. Yeah, this is when you go outside and just start throwing things with as low of a release port as possible, and then you shrug it off when you when you when you hit it. Like hey, did. To be fair, though, on a more serious note with CJ, we touched on it with Bones when we talked about the mental stuff. Look, he went through a lot. The guy literally had like 10 car crashes a game when he played quarterback for the Niners. Yep. He was basically the most scrutinized guy on the team. And people basically were like, 
I've seen it everywhere. People thought that this is the guy that's on the team because he throws to George Kittle and Trent Taylor in the Nashville squad. So, yeah. and he's Kyle's guy. And look, he yeah. suffered a real tragedy that he I'm did. very sorry that he had to go through that and all of that. Yes. And for him to bounce back and look like he was a much better player than what he showed the last time we saw him was very awesome to see. So I do, I do want to say that about Yeah, him. in all seriousness, way to go, CJ. Good for yeah. you. You've gone through hell and back, and uh, it's a great, great story and a great, great to see you um, land on your feet. Hopefully Nick Mullins can do the same, although Nick has not faced anywhere yeah. near the adversity or whatever word you want to call it right. CJ has. Hey, real quick, Grant, before you go, before I go, Joshua the Frank, he wants to hear you go on Mullins one more time. Give it give it to the people. Who's Joshua? Where, where, where are we at? Right here at 2.04 p.m. Hey, real quick, just this this has to be your last Mullins thing. Just give the people what they want, just so that they don't miss it. Make it loud and clear what you, what you felt about Mullins yesterday and moving forward. Okay, I don't see the question, but what I feel about Nick Mullins – is that um, – what do I feel about Nick Mullins? I feel the exact same about Nick Mullins that I felt before the game. Um, it's not about him taking over the 49ers. The comparison to Jimmy Garoppolo was always about Jimmy. Is Jimmy good enough? Is Jimmy worth the contract he gets if he's not even better than his backup? That's what that was all about. Nick Mullins, he may or may not be a starting quarterback in the NFL one day. I think he's good enough. I think if you have one bad game, that doesn't – that doesn't rule you out forever, but I'm just not sure that he'll get the opportunity. Um, no one gave him a high grade coming out of college. No one's no organizations like, well, we've had a third round grade on him. He's still a nobody that has to be consistently good. And he hasn't shown that he can do that yet. So we may not see him for a while. He may be the Niners backup. I mean, it seems like they were thinking they could trade him for a second or a third round pick. And maybe now he'll be their long-term backup. I don't know. Right. What do you think? Yeah. Unless CJ Beathard just takes a spot. Look, that's to me, that's the most in, interesting conversation of this week. Because look, if he's not even suiting up for games, regardless of what he showed in those 10 games, look, it's a bad look for him optically. Yes. And I, I, again, you're the reporter. I'm just a guy observing. But I do think optics matter a lot in this league. And look, if he doesn't get pulled from that game, I think it doesn't look as bad as it looks today, in spite of all the bad things he did that game. Getting short and his backup looking so much better in basically essentially the same situation. Maybe the yeah. Eagles were playing softer on defense, but CJ looked more confident. He looked more assured throwing the ball. He moved a lot better in the pocket. For that to happen, dude, it's rough. It's really rough. And I hope that someone gives him an another shot and everything because I think he's a solid backup player and who can start occasionally. Well, it's interesting. We've talked about the psyche of quarterbacks and how that was the first time he had expectations and he didn't handle it well. Well, now this is the first time that he's been straight up written off, right? I mean, he came into the league, had no expectations. He, he beat the Raiders and people are like, oh, this guy's intriguing for an undrafted free agent. And he went on a little bit of a Cinderella run and now everyone's like, no, it's over. He's he does he is not good enough. He is totally written off probably by his own teammates and coaches. Right. It'll right. be interesting to see how he responds because we've seen now how CJ responds to that. Right. And his time was coming. And look, Jimmy, Jimmy has for the most part responded in spite of just taking beatings yeah. from just media and fans and everybody alike. Yeah. CJ apparently has responded. I'm now it's next to I'm not. I'm gonna wait before I say he's fully responded because it was only five, five minutes. and a half minutes. Yeah, right. But he apparently. But it's very positive to see that he has that type of self belief and yeah, that type of grit to fight himself through that adversity. And look, now it's Mullins' turn. And right. me, and in that sense, it's an opportunity for Mullins to grow and show toughness, the way CJ and Jimmy have. I mean, absolutely. it's something that's inevitable for every quarterback. He had to go through it eventually. Now it's his turn. 